guys Polar the doctor back again today we're working on a polaris razor Let's see if i can get this thing to flip around it's not flipping around work that time tonight we're working on a transmission in a 1000 polaris razor as you can see got a little issue there a little hole uh the reverse chain broke in this thing and um I think this happens in a lot of them. This is just a, I think this is about a 19 or 20 um, regular XP 1000 non-turbo. So I guess somewhat of a standard transmission to have. I found out in this little workings that there's a whole bunch of different gear ratios, different transmissions they got in these things. I don't know why they just didn't uh, figure out one and go with it or figure out two and go with it. But they figured out five of them and went with them. So, uh, I've already, as you can see, I already got the bolts out of here. There's just a ton of, um, the 12 millimeter headed bolts. Uh, also removed the selector, gear selector cover here. And I will show a little bit later how to, how to put that back together. I guess taking it apart ain't that bad. There's also supposed to be one other shaft in here and I have it in my box of parts. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to replace this case. Naturally, this right side of the case. And I also have got a, um, a new chain we're going to put in, uh, made by a company called, let me see here, Specialized ATV. Uh, run into some issues with supplies of the Super ATV kits. So this found this guy, had it in stock, looks like he makes some pretty good stuff. And he sent me everything I needed as well as a... Um, uh, reinforce or a, a larger plate for that snorkel gear that runs out. So I'll show putting that in too. So let me uh, get this thing pried away. I'm gonna put the camera on a, a stand here so I can at least get my hands free. I'm gonna get this thing pried up and show you what's on the inside and show you what we're gonna do to get it replaced. Got the thing mounted up. Hopefully that don't fall off. Go watch many other videos. You know I don't have a hope. A uh, whole lot of luck with keeping the camera steady or keeping the camera on the stand. So we're gonna pry this thing open. I've got a, it's got a gap here on the side. Um, so just stick a screwdriver in there, and you want to stick one on this right side as well, just so you can pry it open evenly from both sides. Can't find a screwdriver right now, so here we go. Got one now. Pry it up here. Pry it open on this side. Slides right apart like that, and as you can see, the damage there. You get some si a pretty uh, sizable hole in the case, and what happened is the chain wraps around here, and it got the broken piece got under this gear here, and just popped a hole in the case. I'm going to clean this thing up. Uh, it's just got RTV on it that seals the case up. I'll go ahead and clean it up. I'm going to try to slide this gear out. I'm pretty sure it'll slide out without removing anything else. Let's see if I can get it to slide out of here. That'll give us a little bit of a little bit of room to. Um, well, I was going to say I'd slide it out of there, but it ain't want to come. That bearing is caught in there at a little bit of an angle that's keeping it from coming out. So we'll deal with that later. Actually, the piece of the chain, the chain is still down in here. So, there's your chain. Broken reverse chain is the culprit. And I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up. And then we will uh, go to removing some of these gears out of here to replace it with the uh, specialized ATV kit. So, let me jump to that and I'll cut the camera back on in just a second. Alright guys, we're going to pull everything out of this... Uh, Specialized ATV box to see what we got. Uh, first thing we got here is a shaft. Uh, it's going to be replacing one of these shafts here. It's a uh, this long one here. So next thing we got is the um, this is the retainer ring, which goes down in here on this this gear here. And what happens is these things are fairly thin from the factory. And I'm not going to unwrap this all the way because there's some bolts in there that I don't want to lose them. But um, I guess this thing's probably 
maybe an eighth of an inch thick from the factory and then this is the replacement looks like probably close to a quarter of an inch thick or maybe a little more and what that does is this thing has a ton of pressure on it uh, especially through this snorkel gear that it will actually allow the shaft to move out and you lose your clearance on your gears and that can cause a lot of problems so what this does is help hold it down and keeps that little bit of deflection from coming in it and um, possibly tearing up some more stuff it was um, just a little little upgrade part that uh, fellas from Specialized talked me into and uh, we're going to give it a shot. Figured while we're in this deep we may as well uh, upgrade it just a little. So this is another gear. I'm thinking that this thing has a, a gear set in it that is... What, what I've noticed in most of these is this like this is a replica of a high lifter uh, transmission with a I don't know if the high lifter uh, chain is this thick or not but very similar to or I don't know I don't even think the chain goes on there but uh, very similar to um, uh, what the high lifter chain goes on and what it does is um, it changes the transmission gearing. Yes, here's where the chain goes here. Uh, it changes the transmission gearing to what a high lifter bike would be. So it actually gears it down a little bit. And that's the reason in the... There's the chain. That's the reason in the shaft and the gear. Because this is this will actually be a little bit of a gear reduction on it. Um, because it's... Uh, goes to a um, high lifter transmission instead of just a normal XP. So this is what we got. You see how huge our chain is. Uh, this is the gear that meshes up with it. It fits right in there like that. And so you got a whole lot beefier chain there. And then like I said, this gear here is what's going to change the, um, I'm pretty sure that's the low speed gear, but I'll I'll uh, figure that out eventually. All right, so let me flip this uh, camera over just a little bit here. So you can see what's going on with the transmission. Actually, let me move this thing so you get a little bit better perspective. A bit better angle on it. <clears throat> it's been a little while since I took one of these apart, so uh, hopefully I can remember how to get it all down and get it back together. Uh, what we're going to pull out first is this, um, this shift linkage here shift drum whatever you want to call it it slides right out of that uh that hole in the case uh, we'll use our specialized parts to hold every our box to hold everything then what you can do now is pull up on this shaft and slide this uh, these shift forks off of the gears that they're on get that out of the way just kind of keep that all together so you'll know halfway which way it goes back on there I believe we can pull this shaft out next. Yes. Come right out. It actually has got just a little bit of residue on it. Let me uh, clean that up a little bit. And I told you wrong on that. The shaft that we're replacing is that shaft. So here's our... Here's our... Uh, Old shaft, new shaft. I was thinking it was on here, but it's not this shaft that we're replacing. We're going to end up having to change one of these gears out with this corresponding gear. So this is uh, what we're looking at. You can see here, just as a quick comparison, the size of the chain compared to this chain. This thing looks like a timing chain out of a Honda, uh, about the width of it. This one here is about three times that wide. And I don't know if you can tell the difference or not. But there is a um, there is a difference in these gears here, as far as the size goes. This one on the new shaft's a little larger uh, than the than the factory one, so that is going to allow for a little bit of reduction. From what I understand, that's on the low side, so that's definitely good. This guy's running some um, Outlaw twos, and he's pretty rough on it. So as you can see, so um, that that will definitely help him out. Uh, rest of this stuff, I'm gonna see if I can pull both of these shafts out together this one and this one it seemed like i tried this before and it didn't work but 
Well, oh, it's going to work in this case. So I pull both of those out, set them to the side. I probably should have moved my other parts here so I don't have stuff stacked on top of everything, but I didn't. We're going to get on it. Uh, Got to wipe this out just a little bit because I couldn't get all of it cleaned up. All right, so what we're going to need to do first, or what, I guess it really don't matter of your order, but uh, I'm going to pull these bearings off of this old shaft and put them on the new one. Uh, a couple ways to do this. Uh, this one on the end here is probably going to be fairly easy if I just took a like a three-jaw puller, pulled it off. This one on the end here is going to be a little different. Uh, I'll probably stick a bearing separator in it, or some people could, it ain't, it's not tied against the gear, so i probably just use a bearing separator, slide it in there, and then put it in the press, push this out. Usually once these things get moving, they pop right out. So uh, let me go ahead and pop both of these off and uh, tap them back on this new shaft, and we'll be ready to stick that shaft in there, and uh, we'll jump to the next part, which is probably going to be this. Maybe this retainer, um, retainer washer. I don't know what you want to call that thing, but let me let me get those bearings off. Cut the camera back on in a sec. Got the <clears throat> bearings uh, pulled off here. The three jaw worked great on this. The bearing separator separator worked good here. Uh, went ahead and pressed those back on here. Put a little oil around it so it slid on easy. Slid right on there. Bearings are, are good in it. Um, <clears throat> next thing I was going to do is remove this. Um, I don't know what you call it, pinion gear or something, sort of along those lines. I don't know the technical term for it, but the bearing cocked in there a little sideways. Take the hammer and tap on it. Actually, I just knocked it out uh, just to get it to where it will straighten up and come out. Uh, I went over this thing real good. It doesn't have any nicks or any problems with it. Somehow, it <clears throat> it broke that case open and, and never even messed up a tooth on here. So this is still good to go. We'll have to mess with it. Uh, except to put it back on uh, there's still a bunch of crud in the bottom of this thing Let's see if I can show you here uh, see pieces of chain and all that still in there so um, I'm going to get that over to the parts washer get it cleaned out and I'm just going to leave this other gear in here just because just because I don't want to remove it so um, I I really don't I guess I really don't have to all I need to do well no I am gonna to have to remove it no I'm not I don't really know what I'm gonna to have to do to be honest with you I've got to get this um, plate on here but I'm not real sure that the plate is gonna clear the gear uh, about 99% sure that's not gonna work I may end up having to take this thing apart. Yep, that's right. So I am going to have to pull this gear out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. It takes a 5 millimeter Allen. Check camera. All right. Yep, 5 millimeter Allen. Uh, most of the time, these things will have a Loctite on them. Hopefully, the impact's going to break it loose. If not, I may have to drop back and punt and get the ratchet to pull it out of there. And these, this has three bolts on it, the, uh, or four bolts, I'm sorry. I don't know if all of them are like this or not, but three of them are black, and one of them's a silver color. The silver color one is actually longer, and that's what uh, locks your, uh, I'm not real sure what the thing called, the thing that holds the snorkel gear in, it looks like a, almost looks like a huge castle nut. That locks into your, um, into that to keep it from twisting off. And then now you should be able to pull this out or we'll wiggle it out. Get it slider or your bearing to slide around it. And then it's gonna get right to the end and not wanna come anymore. It's about the same way that uh God, anybody get killed in that explosion? I really was just trying to keep it from falling on my foot. But uh this is the plate that we're going to be replacing. Like I showed you before, this is the one that we're putting in there. So it's it's three times as thick. 
but in order to get this plate on here as you can see it's definitely not going over at this bearing because that's the bearing it holds in it's not going over this gear because that gear is even bigger so we're going to have to take this snap ring off actually I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna pull it off from this side what you're gonna have to do is pull it off from this side pull this bearing off and there's a snap ring on this gear not this one like I told you this has been a little while since I took one of these apart but uh pull this gear off and then your retainer will slide right off put your new retainer on put your gear back on your snap ring bearing and you should be good good to go uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off actually let me pull this bearing off of here looks like I'm probably gonna use the uh, bearing separator again and the press pull that off I'll show you what the snap ring looks like show you how to get that gear off get the case cleaned up in the meantime and um, cut the camera back on in a sec so y'all hang on <clears throat> I got the bearing off the end of this shaft <clears throat> the I ended up having to move this bearing just because my uh, reach on my vice I mean on my um, press wouldn't let this bearing go through there so you probably won't have to do that uh, next thing we're gonna do is remove this snap ring on the top here there appears to be a snap ring and a um, washer in there like a thin looking washer yeah, let's see if I can catch these with these snap ring pliers and slide it off the shaft that last that snap ring on that other bearing was a little tough too I was just hoping that that was a one time deal but it might not be this one's not the easiest one to get off either thing is these, these uh, snap rings are so dang thick have a ton of pressure on them. See if I can pry up on it a little bit, get it started with a screwdriver. I'm having to push down on it so hard in order to uh, keep it in the holes. It's tough to pull up on it as well. We're getting somewhere now. There it is. All right, so it's sliding up. Other side sliding up too. Well, was sliding up. Let me get it popped up. It's been popped back in the groove there. Goodness, those things are just not supposed to be that hard. So there we go. Got it slid all the way up now. Pull it all the way off the shaft. Like I said before, there is a. Uh, some sort of washer, thin looking washer here on top of that gear. <clears throat> and I'm not sure how this gear comes off. If, if we were, uh, if everything was going good, it would pop right off there, but it doesn't appear to be. So I might have to put that thing back into press too. So let me press that gear off of there. And then we should be able to remove our plate and replace it with our new plate. So let me get that gear off of there and we'll get to replacing some parts <clears throat> got the bearing pressed off i mean the gear pressed off there um <clears throat> if you guys don't have a bearing separator to do this job i want to go buy one or rent one or something because it makes it a whole lot easier if you got one all right and there's the prize jewel the crown jewel not the prize jewel uh that's what we're trying to get off and this is the one we're putting back on so easy just to slap it right on there now you got to put all this stuff back together and it's probably going to end up requiring me to put this back in the press to put it back together because all these were so dang tight so let me get all these uh press back on so you're probably not gonna have to take this bearing out like like i did but uh press this one on put your washer and your snap ring back in here and then press your <coughs> bearing back on this end of the shaft and it'll be ready to bolt up so let me get all that done clean this case out and we'll start putting this thing back together there guys got all the stuff put back together on this uh, uh snorkel shaft or whatever you want to call it i'm gonna slide this thing back in there may have to tap this thing with a hammer to get the uh get the bearing to slide all the way in nope fell right in there 
and then one of the ears on this um, retainer is a little bit longer than the rest of them just make sure you get that toward the front that's where that longer bolt goes through and then this this um, kit dump did come with the additional bolts uh, put a put a little Loctite on those pretty sure they had yes they had red Loctite on before so that's what we're going to stick back on a little drop of that on there go ahead and start them by hand and these need to be torqued to 10 foot pounds or I think it's 14 Newton meters I believe most of the torque specs in the in the um, Polaris book go by foot pounds I don't know how they mix up metric and standard and all sorts of crazy stuff but they do so what I'm going to do is uh, grab the impact and run this thing down a little bit with the impact I don't even know where my impact is right now because I was using it over there and it's not where it's supposed to be so shoot here it is all right so i got the uh a long extension on the impact there five millimeter allen just snug those up i'm not going to tighten it way way down and we can um, go ahead and install this long one because we didn't do anything with the snorkel gear otherwise you have to get that castle set right and get your preload on your bearing right and all that crazy stuff so all right torque this down to uh to 10 foot pounds My hammer prop fell out so we're going to continue on here Take more than a hammer to slow us down. And then pretty much put this thing back together the way it come apart. I still got to replace that um that one gear on the shaft there. We'll jump on that in a minute. But uh next order of business, I'm gonna stick the the big gear. I call it the pinion gear, but it might not be that. Um actually it's got a little crud in it. Let me uh let me get all the crud out of the teeth of this thing before I put it back in. I'll cut the camera back on in a sec. Cleaned up. Got a uh, little bit of oil put on that bearing to help, try to help it slide down in there. We're going to see if we can get it to go just as easy as that other shaft did. But I don't know. Sometimes it don't work out like that. Kind of wiggle it around problem here is you've got the bearing trying to slide in and you've got to mesh up with these teeth on this uh, this gear as well let me tap that thing with the rubber mallet a little see if I can get it started on down in there like I say it looks like it's high on this side so what you want to do is try to get your bearing going in there square Ideally, it should slide right in if you if you have it going square. Yep, there it goes. Once you get it squared up, it'll basically slide right in there. A little residue off the hammer there. Um, all right. So next thing we need to do is probably. Since we've got to put these other two shafts, um, replace that gear on that main shaft there. Let me uh, figure out what to do about that, and I'll cut the camera back on in a sec. This is the first time I ever put one of these shafts in here, so I'm just kind of learning as I go. But uh, just got it laid down here and kind of figure out what's going on. This is the new shaft, and this gear here is the larger gear, or the larger than factory gear. Uh, I compared them, and this... I don't know if you can really tell the difference there, but uh, this gear is the same size as this gear. But this one is a little bit, let me see if I can tell the difference in them. I think it's a little bit larger. Let me 
sorry, I believe it's a little bit smaller. Yep, it's larger. A little bit larger than the, than the factory gear on that other shaft. So what happens when you put it in, this is how they're going to mesh up when they're in the transmission here. So if this gear is larger, it puts this gear farther away. You can see I got it fairly square right there, and this this gear here is just barely contacting the teeth of this gear. So we're going to have to change this gear, obviously, because that's the one that the chain runs on. So we're going to change it. But we also have to change this gear to a larger gear here that came with the kit. And this is the, I think this is the transition into the high lifter transmission. So that's what we got to do. We got to get to this gear. We got to get to this gear. It appears that I can get to both of those. I don't know. I think this gear is made on the shaft. I believe we're going to end up having to take this side off to change this one. And then this side off to change this one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start by pulling this bearing off here. We'll go ahead and do the, uh, the gear that the chain is going to run on, which is this gear. We're going to go ahead and replace it first. So let me go ahead and uh, pull the bearing off here, snap ring in there, and uh, I'll cut the camera back on right before. All right, guys, so I got the bearing pulled off of the shaft here with my little three-jaw puller. Next thing we got to do is pull this uh, snap, ring, snap ring off and this um, washer that's back behind there. Let me, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it with one hand and I don't have my stand over here for my camera. So let me grab the uh, snap ring pliers, pop those off, and I'll cut the camera back on. Hopefully we're not going to have to uh, press this bearing or this uh, gear off here. So cut the camera back on in a sec. All right, so I got the snap ring off, uh, washer, good old made in China. Um, shaft there with the came in the factory transmission then your I'm going to probably need to need me a spot to lay out all this stuff so I don't end up getting it confused so we're going to slide the gear off lay it down then you have this bearing cage it goes inside that gear another washer just laying them all over here then you've got another snap ring and it appears and we'll have us take the snap this snap ring off this will slide off and then this there'll be one more snap ring to get this gear off so let me pull that snap ring out see if I can do it one-handed here I've been struggling with these snap rings all night so I'm not real optimistic on this one hand Nope, it ain't going to work. Let me, uh, I'll cut the camera back on in just a sec. Snap ring slid off. Now this uh, cog piece comes off. Lay it back down here in the direction it come off. And just like I suspected, there's one more snap ring here and a washer. And then that's the gear we need to get to for the chain. So let me get that snap ring off. Cut the camera back on right before I slide the gear off. All right, got the snap ring off. Now we're left with this washer. Slide it up. Lay it there. And then our chain gear, I guess you can call this. And as you can see, they made it wider, obviously for the wider chain. But in order to do that, it just ended up making a cup over this side. So these... Uh, little tabs here ended up replaced by these big big tabs here so as it came off with the tabs facing up we're going to put this back on with these uh, cog pieces facing up to mesh up with these cogs so now you stick your washer on snap ring I'm going to give this a shot with with one hand and one holding the camera. There again, not very optimistic. Yep. This is I suspected. I can't do it. So I'll cut the camera back on and we'll slide this down. Then our cogged piece will go over top of that. Just like that. Another uh, snap ring washer 
and the next gear here. So let me get, get this going back together and um, I will cut the camera back on, I guess probably when I get this gear in. All right guys, I got the snap ring in there now, or the washer and the snap ring, the cog piece. Make sure you get this washer or the snap ring all the way down. There's actually a groove right there below those splines that the snap ring will go into and it will allow a good bit of play on this gear. Make sure it goes down all the way into that, um, that bottom groove so that you don't have that play. All right, now your cogged piece goes over. Then another snap ring goes down for it. It's gonna line up in this groove. And there again, I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm about 0 for 20 on these snap rings tonight, so not real sure why I think this one's gonna work. Hey, look at there. All the stars lined up for that one. Got it on there. All right, so now you have a washer that goes over that snap ring. Your little bearing cage gear. Another washer. Final snap ring and then our bearing will be pressed back on here. So let me get the snap ring down, put the bearing on, and that shaft will be done. We'll be ready to stick this shaft and this shaft back in, and then the final shaft will be here. So let me get this put back together, and I'll put the camera back on in a sec. Well guys, I almost forgot about this gear we've got to replace on this other side of the shaft. So what we're gonna do is pull this side down same way, pretty much the same way we did the other side. I'm going to get the three jaw on here, pull this bearing off. This cog piece should slide right off there. Yep, there's nothing holding it on. And then we've got another snap ring down in here. And it looks like that's all we're going to have to remove to get this shaft, I mean, get this gear changed out. So let me pull this off. I'll cut the camera back on in a sec. All right, guys, got the bearing pulled off. Now this cog piece, let me move this gear because that's the one we're going to put on there. Now this cog piece will slide right off, flip it upside down so we know which way it goes. Then we've got another snap ring here. Look at there, got that one off. Uh, so we've got the snap ring, there's a washer. Slide this washer out, put it in our pile and then this gear and this is the gear we're looking for all right so this is the one we're putting in and let me see if i can show you the size difference okay, there are side by side i don't know what the teeth tooth teeth count tooth count whatever you want to call it is but that's about the difference in the size. So it's gonna make a difference. And to distinguish these two apart, these uh, uh, specialized ATV stuff have a, has a stamp on it. I was trying to see if it had some kind of count or something on it, but it doesn't. So now, slide this back on. All right, so there's our gear. Trying to see if we got much wear on there. Yeah, it's not too bad compared to the uh, to the old ones. These cogs here will get an angle worn on them, make them pop out of gear and stuff. So that one doesn't look too bad. Put your washer back on. Put your snap ring back on, put your cog piece back on, then your bearings last. So that should be everything with the exception of the chain. We've got to put the chain on the gear here and slide the shaft all in at the same time. So um, I'm going to probably try that next. But let me get this put back together and then we'll be ready to put the chain on. Alright guys, I'm going to try to slide this stuff back together. Uh, to start off with, I'm going to take this shaft. And just kind of slide it in here and not put it in the hole, but get the gear below this gear and have it ready to go in the hole. 
because I'm thinking once I get this shaft in here and this shaft in here, this one will not be able to slide in um, without it already being started. So now we've got the new shaft here with our chain going around it, just like that, like that, and then we've got to feed <coughs> this chain through, or this shaft through, and get the chain on these gears. How about I cut the camera back on when I get it tied together? All right, guys, so I had all this stuff tucked together, and uh, go to put this chain on, and there is just not enough slack in this chain to slide this gear over this gear and that gear over this gear. So what I had to do was remove this gear off of the um, the side closest to the chain and I'm gonna have to <laughs> reassemble it with it all together here but as far as I can tell that's the only way to get this chain on here because it has it is so tight so if you I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to do this or not but uh, we're going to try, if you slide this thing, your chain on your, on your uh, teeth here, it actually takes a pretty good bit of slack up in the chain if, once you get it on the, on the teeth and meshed up right. So, get it started on this big gear. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, if I accomplish this here in just a minute with one hand, you working with two hands shouldn't be any sort of issue. So see, see there, the, the teeth aren't lined up, so we need to rotate, rotate it around just a little bit and slide this chain over just a little bit more to try and get it lined up. And look at that. It's in there perfect now and this thing's fairly square across here so what I want to do now is start sliding our pieces back on there's a washer and then this gear with the bearings inside and hopefully if everything is right I can get this bearing or this gear to line up on this other gear just like that I got to get this bearing in there just like that and one more washer, one more snap ring, and a bearing on the end, and that's how it goes. So now you stick this in as an assembly. I guess if my chain wouldn't have been broke when I took it all out, this would have came out as an assembly. But um, I've had some of these before that this chain gets some slack in it. This has zero slack. Like it is, it's fairly tight, but not so tight that it's going to drag or anything like that. But it's uh. It's definitely meshed up good. Our, our teeth, see I'm just spinning that with my thumb. They're, they're meshed up perfect. So let me get the, um, get the washer on here, get the snap ring pushed down, and the bearing put back on, and I'll cut the camera back on right before I get it back in the case. So I think I got everything together here so I can slide this in, or these two shafts in at least. Down here where I can get to it. All right, so now we're going to um, just slide these two in. Be careful sliding it through your gear, uh, your seal there, not to nick it. Slide this on down, and I'm thinking that I should go ahead and slide this other bear, uh, this other gear here that's in my right hand. Slide it on down as well. Do all three of these at the same time. I can get it lined up over there. There it is. There it is. Slide them all in there together. There you go. It's all together. It ain't gonna, it's not gonna uh, rotate quite right because I don't have the shift forks in there to hold it in neutral. But uh, everything's, all the bearings look like they're bottomed out. So that means the only thing we have left to do is stick our,
stick our shift fork in our shift forks and our shift drum so the shift forks are in the in the bag here and let's see if I can slide these over our sliders I think I got this in the right orientation it really won't go on here but one way once you put that once you put that uh the shift fork in shift drum I'm sorry once you put the shift drum in the shift forks won't go in but one way so now the shift drum slide it in here just like that and then slide your shift forks over and it looks like they all lined up so I'm uh, got the forks in there in the right direction you can see how it rotates everything around there and that's pretty much it on that that part uh, so the transmission back together I'm gonna put some RTV around here I'm also gonna pop open that other case so the case was busted I ended up buying a replacement side case from um, Super ATV I'm gonna pop it out of the box and see what it comes with if it's got to have bearings knocked in it uh, which all these have bearings in them so I don't really have to have that so let me pull it out of the box and see what it looks like cut the camera back on this set guys before you put this uh, right case back on this thing make sure this shift fork or it ain't even a fork this little uh, follower goes into your shift drum um, don't ask me how I know out of our new case uh, comes with a seal uh, no bearings naturally but it does have some bearings in the box probably not going to reuse those or use those because we've got the factory ones and they're still in good condition looks like the only thing we're going to have to change out is this um, sensor that goes in this hole here which I figured that as well as that uh, cogged piece there, there with the three Allen head bolts on it. So I'm going to take it out, put it back in this hole here, put some Loctite on it. And that looks like the only things we got to change out. Uh, other than the, the drain plug, that's pretty obvious. Got to put the drain plugs in them. So um, let me uh, get that stuff swapped out, get it over on this new case, throw some RTV on it, and we'll uh, get it stuck back together. All right, guys, the only other thing you got to take a, take off of this old case to put on the new one, unless yours got hung in the other side, is these little dowels. There's two dowels, um, one here and one up on the other side over there. And I'm going to tell you, these things are not the easiest thing to get out. Um, I'm actually breaking a sweat over here trying to get this thing out of here. But I uh, ended up catching, some, catching it with some vice grips, twisting it, got it to break loose, and... Or just have to keep working it to work it out of there and uh i'm about ready to give up on this one and finish it up tomorrow so it's uh it's been a tough one so uh, i'm gonna get that out and i think i might uh rtv this thing back together tomorrow so see y'all then i finally got the pins out of these things one of them pulled out with the vice grips fairly easy the other one i ended up having to uh to heat it up and get it to come out so um we're gonna try to slide this cover back on I'm going to have to do something else with my camera because it ain't working quite right. So let me get that straightened up. I'll cut the camera back off. All right, so we're going to try to slide this thing on here. See if I can get everything lined up. Really the biggest thing you need to worry about is getting your, um, your the, the axle, I don't even know what you call that, pinion or whatever. Get it lined up with your seal. This uh, case, new case, came with a bunch of grease on that uh, lip to keep it from flipping out. If yours doesn't have a bunch of grease on it, you need to lube it up so it doesn't, uh, doesn't let that seal flip out as it goes down over that shaft. I think this one's going to be good. Yep, looks like it's good. This other shaft here for the shifter, if you're looking at it, uh, it goes on the more upward hole. The other hole is open. That's where your uh, linkage and all that goes in. So I'm going to stick all these bolts in here. I'll get you a torque spec on them. Uh, actually, I might actually have it right here. Let me see if i got the torque spec on this, uh, on this cover. And I will uh, get all those put back on. And uh, 20 foot-pounds is what the case bolts 
need to be tightened up to that's 27 newton meters uh, per the manual so uh, stick all those bolts back in and then we will work on getting this linkage put up put on next still got to put this um, uh, sensor in here as well as the drain plugs so uh, get sensor in the drain plugs all the bolts we'll work on the selector little, in a little bit getting the selector put together first thing we need to put on here is this little gear there is a little mark on one of the teeth right there you can see by my thumb or my index finger not by my thumb the one up here uh, it slides over this shaft and it actually has a uh, indent in it right here that you can line up on your gear right there and that mark is uh, if you are calling this the top that's about uh, about the 10 o'clock position all right next part to go in is this piece here two marks on it they should go your one mark on here should go in between your two marks on here so slide it in here like this just like that and then this shaft goes in next I didn't remove this piece off of it there's a little o-ring right there kind of holds it so we're just gonna leave it on there there again this has got a uh, a spot in it too there that's going to line up with our gap here slide that in and then i'm probably going to put the spring in here next the spring hooks on here and then slide it down in this little hole here so we stick it on here stick the uh spring down in here and then the last piece to go on is this little uh I think it's called a gear selector paw or something like that and it goes on still has to line up a notch I'm sorry a notch here with the notch in this shaft so it slides over and I may end up having to have two hands for this well, let me see I'm gonna try to slide this spring out slide this down like that till that meshes up and then we can wedge the spring in here probably need a screwdriver wedge that spring in there and this case here actually came with a new cover so I'm gonna stick the new cover on there I do need to put the um, the uh, it's got a vent the little vent cap thing it's on here so I need to stick that in there and actually not the vent the vent elbow it came with that too there you go so i gotta stick that on there and then that will be it uh be ready to put this thing on the bike i still haven't put my sensor in nor my drain plug but i got to get that and then we'll uh stick this back on the razor and should be good to go till i hope you don't break this chain but probably break something else so also i forgot i do have one more the sensor to put on here for the shifter it's not that complicated the shifter sensor looks like this it's got a washer on this side, a washer on the top side, and this little part here goes in that little slot. That's all you have to do to put it back on. So that's all there is to that. All right. Um, that's it for this little short video. Well, I don't know how short it's going to be. It may be in, end up being a little little while after I get it uh, get it um, edited. But appreciate y'all watching. Watch my other, Check out my other videos. i got a lot of stuff on these razors. And uh, hit the like button, subscribe. Have a good night.